What's poppin' you guys? Welcome back to another episode of Sweet Talks. Today is super exciting because we're gonna be talking about body positivity. If you guys are struggling with weight loss or even weight gain, this is the episode for you. We have a special guest today by the name of Sarai Smith. You guys may know her, singer, songwriter, and I'm excited to bring her on now. But before we get started, make sure you guys grab your sweets. I'm eating Sour Patch Kids today. And let's get into this now. Ah. Hey, love. I can't see. Oh, I can see you now. Okay, yes. Love the pink. Um, so first and foremost on this show, you know, the first thing that we do is drip check. So can you give us a little look of what you got on today? Okay. Let me stand up. Let me move my chair. Okay. This little top. Ooh. My pants. Okay. Where'd you get the necklace? The necklace is really cute. The necklace? Okay, so this is actually my shirt. Oh no, my shirt. My purses chain from Prada. And then this necklace is from this place in on Melrose. That. That's so cute. Girl, I love Melrose. That used to be my spot when I lived in LA. <laughs> so that's my spot. So, okay, you guys, if you are new to Sweet Talks on this show, what we do is we eat sweets while we talk. So Sarai, what you got on you? Cause I'm snacking on oh my some um, Sour Patch Kids, keeping it sweet. Again. I actually have my gummy bears. Got- okay, gummy bears. you like, I got my gummy bears. You guys, throughout this whole thing, my hands are shaky from this energy drink. Shout out to Alani. I left them while I was getting dressed, but they're gummy bears. <laughs> okay, what kind? Is it the um, Harboro? Yeah, they're mini rainbow frogs. Oh, I love those. That's my brand. Yes, many rainbow frogs. <laughs> okay, so Sarai, let's just go ahead and get into what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about body positivity. But before, um, I just wanted to, you know, give you your flowers. I did watch Cheaper by the Dozen, and I love the song um, that you did with your mom called Nothing Without You. It was jamming. So congratulations on that. Do you have anything else like that's gonna be coming out that we should be expecting music wise, art wise? Yeah, I've been I've been working really hard, as you guys know. And if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen that I've been in and out the studio for like three years now. So hopefully some upcoming projects, but I'm just trying to get it real crispy, real nice to um come out with things. I've been working really hard. Um, but yeah, mostly school and music. And yeah. <laughs> That's dope. So you guys don't know, um, Sarah is actually Brandy's daughter. So how was it actually working on that song with your mom? Like, I feel like that's super dope. Yeah, it was It was really fun. Um, there's actually a little story behind that that I'm just going to tell on this. this Let's song. hear it. Let's hear it. Basically, <laughs> when we <laughs> got the song, um, I was really excited. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to sing for Disney. And that week, I was sick, like super sick, like coughing. I had, I felt like I had bronchitis type thing. Like, was I it COVID? No, it wasn't COVID. Oh, I, thank God. I, I only experienced that one time, and that was two years ago. But it was not COVID. Okay. My mom pulls the studio. You know, she's doing her parts and she's working, and I try to sing on the song, <laughs> and I mm-hmm. try. My voice is just nope, not doing it. So wow. I helped her vocally do everything that she needed to do. And then she had to go film in Atlanta. So she left. And then I came back to the studio a week later when I wasn't sick and I did all my parts. But yeah, I was sick when we first were supposed to record it. But that's it's- crazy. But look at God. Look, it worked out and it came out literally amazing. Why is there a fly on my device? OK, so body positivity. Just wanted to state, seeing your interview on the reel, 
truly loved it. Like, I love how open you were just about, you know, your journey um, and kind of like your workout journey and your health and all of that. That was really dope. So I felt like today we should speak to the girls about, you know, our body. It is very challenging, I feel like, in this age with social media and um, the comparison, you know, can be really hard. Um, so... Could you give us a story about your health and when did it begin when you really seen like, all right, it's time for me to make a change. What did that look like for you? So I was, um, I've been bigger most of my life, you know, a period of time where I was kind of in the normal weight category. My mom, you know, she talked to doctors and, you know, obviously being overweight as a kid is not ideal for a kid to, you know, have any health concerns or anything. So, you know, she checked me when I was around 10 or 11 and I kind of, I got to wait, but as, you know, time moves forward and you enter middle school and you enter high school, you kind of get more and more freedom. And that resulted into me eating a lot of unhealthy things. And mm -hmm. you know, that resulted in me having outburst of just wanting to eat whatever I wanted and it wasn't the healthiest thing so when I was 17 um I ended up having a really really bad health scare so I had some couple of things that were already going on with me that I was already kind of taking care taking care of and then I ended up in the hospital and you know when doctors are in your face telling you you know you're only 17 years old you shouldn't be having these health issues this young. Mm -hmm. That's scary. It's very scary. And when they basically tell you, like, yo, you could die, like, tomorrow. And, and, and the health that you're in right now, it's just not healthy. Um, in that moment, I said, okay, then, then let's do something about it. Because mm -hmm. I want to live, basically. I want to live my life. I want to be true to myself. I want to have a purpose. And I knew in the body that I was in, I couldn't do it. I couldn't, mm -hmm. I couldn't do this. You know what I mean? I couldn't tell yeah. people. And that's what made me just like, bro, like, please, I mean, <laughs> like, I need to do this. And it wasn't yeah. about weight. It was more so, and I, I don't like it when people say that, like, oh, it's not about weight. It's about my health. No, weight plays a factor in your health. So it's like, yeah. I need weight to be healthy. And mm -hmm. that's what I, I needed to do. You know, and that's really good that we are speaking about this because one thing I could say for myself that I've learned in general, because, you know, health doesn't always have to be about weight. weight. It could be about, um, you know, vitamins, consuming vitamins or just not eating properly. Um, I have a very high metabolism and a lot of people think like, oh, you work out. But um I didn't like, you know, for the longest. And when you are consistently working in the industry, out of the industry, just in regular life, it's like you have to make sure you're on top of your health, you know, because how can you be the artist, the performer, the doctor, if you're not healthy yourself, you know? So how did you, um, what steps did you take to like go about your first process of realizing that like, did you have to kind of change up your routine? Like, what did that really look like for you? Yeah, absolutely. So actually, what um, I had to change a lot of things around me before I decided, like, you know, like, this is how I'm going to do it. Because it, it's, it's different for everybody because you can't look at somebody and, like, be like, okay, your health is bad or your health is great. You know, you can't determine that by looking at someone. Mm -hmm. So I had to change a lot of things around me. So I had to take people out of my life. I had to put people in my life. I had to, you know, I had to get out of the habit that I was already in. I had to start becoming really uncomfortable and then also asking for help. Like that was one thing that I needed to do a lot was ask for help because I felt so alone and I felt that nobody, nobody knew who I was feeling around me. So I would internally keep all of those feelings inside of me which resulted in me eating and I was just like you know what I need to like I need to be uncomfortable so I talked to people I talked to therapists I talked to nutritionists I talked to my doctors and those wow. are the 
how, how can I, how can I do this and be, be great. And like what had happened, I said this in, in one of my YouTube videos before is that I caught COVID and I got COVID and when I was this like, um, so this is this is maybe the end. Yeah, this is the end of 2020. So this is maybe around December ish, I started discovering that I had like hives on my face and everything like everything I would have an allergic reaction because yeah. COVID and, and people know this. Um, it's like studied that you know, COVID affects o more overweight people a lot more than, you know, healthy, like a, at a thinner um, in a thinner body. So I didn't expect that and it hit me and I was like, yo, I can't eat anything. So all I ate were like popsicles and, you know, chicken broth, but everything would make me like basically yeah. it would come up and I was just not having it. So for four or five months or three to four months, I wasn't eating like at all, like nothing. And that kicked out 80 pounds. And I was like, well, once I start eating, I don't want to wow. gain this. Pack. I just I just went through all of this. Eighty pounds. A Eighty lot? pounds. That's a lot. Yeah, one of my boyfriend's friends, he lost forty pounds, and I was a lot bigger than him, so I knew it wasn't my lot of weight. So I ended up losing mm -hmm. pounds off of me for not eating anything, but that left me so malnourished, like malnourished, where I had like vitamin infusions and and all these things. It was so scary, but I lost eighty pounds, and and my mom was like. You know what, Sarah? You lost eighty pounds. Great. You're not sick anymore. But how are you gonna keep going? Like, how yeah, are you in a healthy way, right? Yeah, healthy, very, very safe way. Because obviously, starving yourself is not healthy. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to die now, right? So she, um, she, me and her found certain things. We looked up a lot of things. Talked to dietitians. Um, and all I ate was fruit and fish and everything that's light on a stomach. And, mm -hmm. you know, I had a couple things taken out of me, like certain, certain little things that I had to get out. And then that made me healthier and it made me better. And then I started eating better and all I ate was fish, fruit, a lot of water. I worked out a lot. I worked out every day. I was really determined. And then all in all, I lost... 150 that that 80 wow. and then finally that 150 turned into 200 and it's just been a whole year of me just eating correctly and now girl i want a burger wow. I want a, I want a, like now <laughs> i back on to what i was on last year but <laughs> today wow I, right <laughs> no honestly though i give you the total props because one thing about doing something like that you have to be consistent and consistency is very hard mm. to do like you know in any any craft not even just help like in order to be the best at whatever you're trying to achieve you have to be consistent right. and it's hard to break away from patterns that you already had so mm -hmm. i know that must have been really hard but that's amazing that you had your mom as your support system and yeah. people around you to be able to motivate you and i'm sure um do, did you have like a um like a coach like a trainer or anybody I had a couple and then, um, which was the amazing part because, you know, not a lot of people have access to that all the time is having a personal trainer, a chef, uh, you know what I mean? My mom put a lot of support <laughs> behind what I needed to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that most people would step up for their kids if their kid's life was on the line, you know what yes, I mean? Yes, of course. My and, mom, you know, there is some um, affordable ways to be healthy. Um, if you know, if you do a lot of research and stuff like that, there is affordable ways. Um, people, a lot of people do like meal prepping, um, cooking. You know, cooking at the top of the week, like cooking a big chicken or whatever it is, like you know, yeah, baked chicken or whatever, and just kind of meal prepping throughout the week. Um, did you have like a particular routine that you practiced on a daily basis? I definitely because we need the tea, Sarah. Like we I, need the tea that's different from anybody else. I'm telling you, what happened is that I stopped eating out. That's the best thing that you could do for yourself. Like, don't eat from restaurants. Like for a year straight, I was not eating from restaurants. Actually, I ate pretty 
pretty much vegan for this year or last year, this year and in this last year, which, and I was at a really heavy weight. Like people don't understand. That's why they're like, oh, like how does she lose the weight so fast? When you're at a very heavy, heavy weight and you shock your body, like, oh crap, like, yo, she's putting actually like good things in me. It yeah. weight. And the amount that I was like working out and the amount of you know, nutrition I was putting back into my body, it was like, okay, now I get it. She's just burning off her weight. Mm -hmm. and so basically, I just stopped eating out. So my grandma would make me like red beans. Yes, rice. grandma. Grandma would make me red beans. She would cut rice down to like cauliflower rice or like something in a vegetable. And then you know, um, my boyfriend's mom, she's actually like a licensed like nutritionist, she's an esthetician, like, so she would come over every day for me, and just bring me a bunch of vegan meals, she would like, That's like, a massage, blessing. Yeah, she would massage my body to like burn off any of like, sweat or excess weight, she would like scrub my skin, like she helped me a lot too. And she actually has a business. So um, oh. She has a whole business for that. So she would bring me vegan food every single day. And I would just eat off of that salads, you know, pesto sauce with zucchini and like just really good meals that were just vegan. And wow. you like the vegan lifestyle. That much. is awesome. Yeah. Oh, so okay, so I, so now I really want to get into social media and dealing with the pressures of the ideal body. You know what I'm saying? It's like I feel like in our generation right now, social media is it. People eat, sleep, breathe social media, right? And because of that, a lot of the influences um, and things that people decide to do comes from social media. And so the first thing. Uh, when you look up studies, a lot of people go into depression because of the ideal body type or people feeling like, you know, they're not good enough. Um, how do you, how would you say you deal with the pressures of social media in general when it comes to body image? I, I've always dealt with it. It was really difficult to, to deal with my body image. And even still to this day, you know, results of weight loss comes with loose skin and stretch marks and cellulite and all these things that, you know, a lot of people on Instagram seem like they don't have. So right. very difficult to just compare myself to other people. But how I deal with it is, just, you know what, I did a lot. You know, I, I appreciate what I've been through, even if it's me falling down the stairs like I had before and cutting my knee. And now I have a keloid on my knee because I cut myself. I mm -hmm. survived. You know? Right. It's the I, journey. Right. I appreciate that I survived that. And that's a little mark that's going to be there for a minute. And I just have to appreciate that. So when I see, you know, people on social media, I'm kudos to you, girl. You got it. And that's okay if I don't. You know what I mean? Right. It's fine. Like, it's not life or death in this situation. I don't need to have an hourglass figure to live a happy right. day on life even though I kind of want one it doesn't <laughs> you know sometimes yeah <laughs> so that's basically how I look at it and I know that a lot of women struggle with that a lot of depression comes from that but watch watch it you know what I mean like go on Instagram for 10 minutes throughout the day and call it a day you know what I mean do something else or yeah and you know I don't know if you guys out there know this but actually on the app you can set a timer to where it'll alert you if you spent over five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 on Instagram. And that's something that I um, also decided to do um, for like a straight year, just because it helped me with my mental space. And yeah. for me, I grew up like super tiny, like different from the average, you know, weight size. I got picked on for being tiny. Um, and I think over time, I just learned that basically to inspire people off of my weight. Like it's so many people now where they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you could style that at your size. Like I'm tiny too. Where'd you get your jeans? You know, like kind of just transforming it and making it better instead of something negative, you know? Yeah. So um, last question, and then we're gonna wrap things up tonight. Um, so for anybody struggling with body image, weight loss, um weight gain journey what advice would you give them 
I would give them, you know, really, really focus on mental health, really, and, and get that you have to really, really learn how to love yourself and pat yourself on the back because at the end of the day, you're your own biggest support system and you cannot depend on anybody else to give you any type of happiness. Obviously, support is beneficial, but at the end of the day, you are loved and you are worthy of everything that comes to you. And if you don't feel beautiful in the moment, go in the mirror. My mom told me, she said, every time you look in the mirror, smile so you have no reason to there's no reason for you to think bad if you're smiling you know what i mean even mm -hmm. if it's and i love that yeah it, every single time if you're feeling depressed right now you know go into the, every time you see yourself in the, in the mirror you smile it doesn't matter like you go into the mirror you see yourself smiling your mind's not gonna wonder and then she also says don't let a negative thought be in your head for more than 17 seconds like mm -hmm. not let it just stay in your mind if you're like dang i feel really really bloated i don't right. want to or, i feel really because nobody really talks about the other side either i feel very thin today you know what i mean i, I feel like i look very small mm -hmm. don't let that sit in your mind for more than 17 seconds like think of something else really fast because that that's only gonna linger and that's only gonna just consume your whole energy for the whole day and mm -hmm. most don't even look at you the way that you look at yourself you're your biggest right. critique so it's so it's just stay really really positive keep off of social media if that's gonna make you feel away and just be your biggest support really love it your, love yourself and look at yourself like yo i have been through a lot mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yourself, just recognize that acknowledge that that's just <laughs> i need to get my advice <laughs> Beautiful advice. I love that. And another thing I do want to add to that, y'all, affirmations, the music you listen to, the people you hang around, it really does create the world that you live in. Um, but we're going to wrap things up. Sarah, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate you for being here and just being open and speaking with the people. Love this. Had a lot of fun. I had so much fun, too. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Of course. Thank y'all for tuning in. Make sure you guys check out Sweet Talks every Monday. Also, check out Siraj. She has music coming out. Um, check out her latest singles. Everything will be on her page. Don't forget to go there now. We love you guys. We'll see you guys later. Thank Bye, you. Siraj. Bye.